Good evening and welcome to MXCC News. My name is Stephanie Finaldi. And I'm Brian Grady. First up tonight, fallout from Election Day. At the national level, President-elect Joe Biden is working with his transition team, and President Donald Trump has yet to formally concede the election. Here in Connecticut, we're hearing from a local Senate candidate who lost her race for a second time. MXCC News reporter Abdul Samed shares the story. I'm Abdul Samed here in New London County. Before the election, I interviewed Martha Marx, the former New London City Council member, on why she was running against Paul Fumika, the incumbent Republican state senator, for the second time. This was what she said. My name is Martha Marx, and I'm running to be the next state center of the 20th district. The 20th district is part of Old Saybrook, Old Lyme, East Lyme, Waterford, New London, Salem, Basra, and part of Mockville. I am running because I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 35 years. The last 20 of those years, I've been a visiting nurse in people's homes. I see how our public policy and our healthcare policy work and how they don't work. We need um, someone in Hartford that understands the needs of the working class and the middle class. So I hope to be that person. During the election, Martha ran her campaign against Paul Famica State Senate voting record. My opponent voted against the police accountability bill, always just bringing it down to it's about the qualified immunity. The qualified immunity did not change. My opponent voted against the $15 minimum wage. That is something I would have championed. While Carlton McCarthy, a Republican state representative, endorsed Paul Famica's ability to reach across the aisle. Famica, he's a great guy. We put together a budget that now has a rainy day fund of almost $3 billion. Martha Marks also encouraged voters to vote and make their voice heard. This is why it's so important for everybody to get out and vote. Um, your life depends on it. Martha lost to Paul Fumica by 1,177 votes. Martha Marks' political journey for Connecticut State Senate unfortunately came to an end. Abdul Samed reporting. Thank you, Abdul, for the summary and wrap-up of the 2020 elections. COVID definitely added some suspense, but now they are finally done. The pandemic and rising corona cases are on everyone's mind. The virus is having a huge impact on our daily lives. Here at Middlesex, student activities are adapting to state and federal regulations, despite the changes. They're moving forward and helping student life. Here at Middlesex Community College, things are a little quieter this semester, but clubs and activities are still happening whether it's online or here on the campus. School activity coordinator Janet Clinic makes sure that the clubs and activities are still happening with COVID precautions. So we offered a lot of activities. We do a spring fest, a fall fest, Halloween party. We do karaoke, trivia. We would also have a club fair so that everybody would be able to find out what type of clubs we have on campus. They could meet with all the club reps. A lot of the students found our bus trips to be very popular. Last semester, students and staff had to stay home due to COVID-19. As a result, clubs and activities were canceled or put on hold. Janet Clank had to think fast to come up with activities to lift spirits up during this unusual time. I think like everybody, we had to totally regroup. Some of them we took our time canceling because we thought maybe we'll be coming back, maybe we'll be coming back, and it was inevitable that we were not going to be able to do anything like that. As the months went on, some activities went virtual. So then we started with our trivia was easy to move. We just moved them onto uh, Kahoot and uh, folks sign in on WebEx and they can participate in that. We've done escape rooms which has been fun, virtual escape rooms, virtual bingos. Activities typically just entertain students, but there are other benefits. Now, there are several that focus on helping students during this tough time. So we did a few things outside this semester. We did a drum circle where we had one of our professors, Professor Nasta came in and we set up a circle, social distance uh, outside and everyone was six feet apart, but yet they were able to participate and that was a drum circle and guided meditation. One of the big focuses is self-care. We're trying to gear some of them towards some of the stresses that people are, are feeling. We, th we feel that that's more important than ever. So we're trying to do some meditation. There's also an emphasis on helping students cope. We're doing group workshops where they're working on reminding people that self-care is important. There's some ways that you can help alleviate that and some ideas just to keep people thinking about these things and not letting them just fester and, and become bigger problems. If you are interested in joining a club or participating in an activity, do not hesitate. 
Stephanie, I think you got to meet up with that uh, reporter, Stephanie. I think the two of you might have a lot in common. Yeah. All right. Well, you can find out more on their Facebook page or Instagram at MXCC underscore student underscore activities. Movie theaters have finally opened back up, and here's what you need to know. MXCC news reporter Evan Mandela looks at how a movie theater in Wallingford reopened and what precautions it is taking. We all remember a time when we went to the movie theaters, grabbed a nice bucket of popcorn, extra butter, got a comfortable seat with a view of the screen, cracked open some milk duds we snuck in from the dollar store down the street. One of the many American traditions interrupted by the coronavirus. Many theaters have shut down, but not here at Holiday Cinemas in Wallingford. Holiday Cinemas has added safety measures for people who still desire the movie theater experience. We are uh, requiring from rolling the lobby, the hallway, going to the bathroom, and just sitting, not eating anything, that you are wearing a mask. Sanitizing touch points pretty frequently, um, sanitizing seats between shows, you know, and sanitizing stations throughout. People need to be sitting six feet apart from each other. Yeah, add for, for social distancing. Despite all the precautions, the pandemic is still taking its toll. I can't lie, it is a rough time for the industry, like all around right now. Just, not just for us, but for every movie theater. So, for the foreseeable future, it will definitely be slow. Most movie companies are pushing movies back now and not really giving a release date. Yeah. I think they'll start to give a release date once they, like, there's a better understanding of when COVID will kind of be settling down. But until then, most movie companies have been push, pushing movies back. With big releases delayed, theaters are showing movies that might not be on your radar. We had one movie uh, called The Call that I don't even, it wasn't even on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, I had never heard of it. And it had some pretty big names, like some pretty big horror names. Tobin Bell, that uh, the woman from Insidious were in it. And she actually gave our theater a shout out because we were one of the few theaters that were like showing the movie. So, she give you an idea of the, uh, the movie landscape right now. It's very sparse. Theater managers look forward to returning to business, but they understand the severity of the pandemic. When movie companies decide to release their big movies, then it'll attract people to the theater, but until then, I feel like people would rather stay home and watch movies. If you'd like to enjoy a movie just like we used to, Holiday Cinema's doors are wide open. In Wallingford, Evan Mandela, MXCC News. Thank you for that report, Evan. Have you seen any good movies lately, Brian? You know, I, the other night I got Redbox and I saw Russell Crowe, Unhinged. It's a great movie. Mm. And uh, I'm trying to go see uh, The War with Grandpa with uh, Robert De Niro. It's playing at the Holiday Cinemas in Wallingford. Sounds good. Coming up, what exactly is going through a Pace University football player's mind, especially amidst all the COVID concerns? And later, New Britain is still going strong with music performances. How they're safely making music after the break. I really had no idea of what I wanted to do, so I worked a lot of minimum wage jobs. And finally, I was just like, I, I just need to go back to school because I wanted to get a business degree. And Middlesex Community College was super convenient. I got a lot out of Middlesex. I never thought I would have reached this far with my associate's degree. It allowed me to buy a house. I was able to get married. It was, it was a dream. I chose Middlesex because they had a lot of different programs that I was interested in. For me, it was just easier to come here part-time and also keep my job. Middlesex, I would say, helped me get my foot in the door in the news business. The Center for New Media has all the stuff that I see daily at News 8 to be able to jump on and say, I have experience with a control room. I have experience with a TV studio. It's definitely a good choice. Playing college football has not been easy for most people, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic still raging throughout most of the world. MXCC news reporter Vanessa Lesma sat down with a Pace University football player and discussed exactly how he's been working around those concerns. Thank you, Steph and Brian. Some universities are still managing to allow football players to condition and practice. Pace University is one of them. Attending college during the pandemic has been a tough one on some students. Randy Benitez is an online student and football player at Pace University. 
He talks about trying to play during this odd year. Yeah, we started in early September. Um, we had it for four days a week, and then one of our players tested positive for the virus. We had to stop for a couple weeks, and, but now we're back at it since last week. Randy lets us know that the whole team cannot gather to practice and instead are separated into groups. So the rules they enforce were just to keep your mask on 24-7 um, during practices. Uh, we also had to keep our social distance, so six feet apart always. And uh, we had to limit the spots in each of our practices. So we're practicing in groups. We can't practice in full team. Although team members are practicing in the fall, they are scheduled to play in the spring of 2021. We're going to have a spring season. Uh, that's not going to count uh, as a year in our eligibility. But next year, in the fall, we're going to have a regular fall season. Um, that's going to count as a year of el our eligibility. Some football, I realize, is better than no football. So This is Vanessa Lesmes reporting for MXCC News. As for next season, athletes and students will continue wearing masks while undergoing these unpredictable times. Thank you, Vanessa, for that interesting profile. A career in football isn't easy to begin with, and now, with COVID, it's become even more of a challenge. Breweries are known for making drinks, but there's a different type of Bloody Mary at the bar this year. MXCC News reporter Alex Turner takes us to Stranger Tides Brewing in Colchester, where owners hosted their first Red Cross blood drive. When the Red Cross asked Stranger Tides Brewing to host the blood drive, they welcomed them to set up what we have here today. Tables and booths were filled throughout the day with donors coming in to help others in need. Both the brewery and the Red Cross are very happy with the turnout. The blood drive reached its capacity of 96 donors who created a total of 71 pints of blood. It's a great sign for future drives at the brewery. We actually have four more dates already booked out, uh, one in December, one in January, and two in February. Stranger Tides has always looked for ways to help their community and others as much as possible. When they reopened on September 4th, they scheduled the blood drive soon after. We've always given back to the community um, and a lot of the events we used to be able to do, we can't currently do because of the pandemic. So we figured this would be a good way for us to still do help out the community as much as we can. Stranger Tides Brewing also hosts casual events to bring in more entertainment to Colchester residents. Now that we're back open for on-site drinking again, um, we're going to be doing trivia nights on Fridays, um, and then once a month we'll have be um, having the comedy craft beer tour. Comedians from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, they all come around here. The Red Cross is in need of help from places like the brewery, who can offer their location as a site for a blood drive and allow the growing number of donors to be able to donate blood. We have lost a lot of drives because of high schools and some community drives that venues are too small. So what is happening is we're looking at larger community spaces to take on a lot of the cancellations that we've had from all those high schools. So we're seeing an increase in the numbers, but a decrease in the actual venues because of the fact of all the cancellations. Blood donations are important at any period of time, but it's especially important during the COVID-19 pandemic, where hospitals are filled across the nation and more people require serious medical attention. Each pint that is donated can save up to three other individuals' lives. So that is a very uh, heartfelt, personal thing for anybody that's doing it. In Colchester, Alex Turner, MXCC News. Thank you, Alex. It's always interesting to see businesses reach out and try new ideas or explore different ones. For more information on Stranger Tides Brewing, visit their Facebook page for posted events. If you want to donate blood, check out www.redcrossblood.org to get started. We've learned how schools and movie theaters reopened during COVID, but what about places of worship? MXCC news reporter Torn Miklas takes us to church. In the era of social distancing, how does the inherently social religious worship be affected? Let's find out. Yeah, it's definitely affected our gatherings and people coming together at every location. But due to technology, live stream, the equipment we have set up ahead of time, we're able to broadcast our services to every home, uh, not only in 
uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts, but anywhere in the United States, someone can watch our services. Well, so we, uh, as soon as the high school shut down back in March, we stopped having in-person worship. And initially we had uh, four people, the worship staff leading the service. As the pandemic went on, that number shrunk. Um, for the first couple of weeks, then two of those people, the music staff decided they weren't really comfortable coming. So since then, there's really only been myself and one other person leading worship on Sundays. Reverend Scott Morrow from North Haven Congregational Church says the transition to online worship went smoothly. We were lucky. We had a live streaming camera that had just sort of been installed in the church and we were just setting it up. So we were able to move to that. Uh, it goes live stream direct to YouTube and people, we put a link on the website, and so that's how people watch our worship now. While the whole congregation can't come together in person, they are forming a sense of community online. It's just really exciting, I think, for the congregation is that people from far away watch. We have people that are that grew up in North Haven but live in West Virginia, you know, or Washington, D.C. now. We have grandkids of, of people in the church that live in Colorado who watch. We even have someone who uh, attended here and had her daughter baptized but lives in England now who's been watching, so it's been exciting. Pastor Jim D'Angelo says the virtual services have been a positive for his church. They're, you know, virtual services are good, uh, you know, the whole Zoom thing and all that that everybody's doing, you know. Um, uh, it's been really good um, keeping people connected, so we've had thousands of people watching our, our services on Sunday and then throughout the week, uh, thank goodness due to the technology that uh, we're able to have and what we've had ahead of time. So we started uh, the very end of September with, uh, we decided to try two Sundays a month. All our nine locations are opened, uh, but we are limited to the attendance of that the states are giving us on regulations. So um, um, we have probably about 60% attendance right now and the other 40% are still home watching the services online. We just made the decision today to stop in-person worship because um, uh, North Haven and the surrounding communities are red zones now. So for now, at least until the end of November, we won't be having in-person worship. Yeah, at least here at this campus where, you know, uh, be prior to COVID, you know, we had, uh, you know, around 260 people that would show up on a Sunday morning. Uh, now we're down to about 130, so we're down about half right now um, because people are still uh, trying to feel out what they're comfortable doing. And with that, uh, this has been Torm Nicholas reporting for MXCC News. Make sure you wear the mask and keep your distance as COVID numbers are on the rise. How does a town celebrate Halloween amidst a pandemic? Middlesex reporter Matthew Mancini took a look at how Colchester overcame the pandemic's challenges. Colchester's annual Trick or Trunk event used to be held at the Green by the Park and Rec, but because of COVID, they had to do things a little bit differently. And by a little bit differently, I mean a lot different. Take a look. COVID has taken a toll on a lot of annual traditions here in Colchester, Connecticut. It was almost every week where the town would host some sort of social event pre-COVID. This wasn't the case for the annual Trick or Trunk event, however. Drive through accommodations have become the standard go-to adaptation for a lot of businesses looking to go for a low-contact alternative. The way that this event worked was that cars would enter through a side road and drive slowly through a bunch of back roads, where businesses and volunteers would have their cars and displays decorated so that passerbys could safely see the amount of time and effort put in by each volunteer. At the end of the displays, volunteers would hand out small bags of candy to cars that came by. Each bag was made of donations from local businesses and other families. Colchester continues to make adaptations to annual traditions to still give townsfolk that feeling of normalcy in otherwise difficult or trying times. Matthew Mancini reporting for Middlesex News from Colchester, Connecticut. I hope everyone had a safe and healthy Halloween celebration. Coming up after the break, pandemic performances taking the stage in New Britain. Just not in a traditional way will take you there. Later on, the toll that distance learning and COVID-19 are taking on students' mental health. That's all next on MXCC News. Can you see Among Us?
I was homeschooled, and after doing a lot of research, I found MXCC, and it looked like a really good fit for me because I wanted to transfer to UConn, and they have the Pathways program. Being homeschooled, it was nice to have smaller classes. The professors really helped me understand the material. I really felt that Middlesex was invested in my education. It's one of the greatest experiences I've had. Mental health today is more important than ever. Social distancing and COVID restrictions mean we aren't socializing like we normally would. MXCC news reporter Joe Nieves looks into how students' mental health may be affected during distance learning. Since the pandemic started, there have been multiple cases of mental health issues rising in the U.S. Anxiety, depression, even suicide. We went around Connecticut to ask students how they felt about this issue. I would say I did start to feel depressed during the pandemic. Beforehand, it was just each day kind of had its new challenge. But now it's like it's just this repetitive cycle. From the start, you know, everything was closed. There was nothing going on to do to, like, keep yourself busy. Though the pandemic has brought many challenges, students have found ways to cope in this difficult time. I would say definitely staying in contact with my friends. We play games and, you know, we communicate, we have fun. Having video chats probably the best, one of the best ways to interact. I would also say, you know, music that you like listening to, you know, gives you a good vibe. And it helps also to focus on studies. Though the pandemic has trapped many in their homes, it has allowed some students to focus more on their family. I definitely grew closer, especially with my brother, you know. Me and him definitely connected a lot more during this. And I definitely grew a connection with my family. Though there seems to be no definite end to this pandemic, these students still maintain a positive outlook. It's not easy for everyone, you know, as this pandemic is still going on. It's really a time to persevere through this. Say one thing in the morning that is positive about your day and what you're having and what you're going through. Say one thing that's positive. We'll all get through this. It's got to be strong and we'll definitely get through this, you know. I'm Joseph Nieves reporting for Middlesex Community College. If you or a loved one is struggling, help is available. You can call 211 to get connected to resources to ease the burden. After seven months of no shows, the ultimate Michael Jackson experience took the stage, which gave them a chance to perform once again. MXCC news reporter Jaden Rogers talks with some of their dancers about how it feels to perform again. I'm here at the Trinity on Main Theater in New Britain, Connecticut, where UMX, the ultimate Michael Jackson experience, with Joby Rogers and his dancers, just had their first show in months. I talked to a few of them, and him, to see how it feels to be back on stage. This October's performance will mark Joby's eighth appearance at Trinity on Main, which is a hometown show for him. All in all, it was a fantastic show. The energy was really high. Most people in the audience were friends of the dancers, friends of mine, people I grew up with. And I think they were very happy to be there. It's just. I think they were looking forward to just a little normalcy. Due to the pandemic, the theater and UMX took plenty of precautions. There was a limit capacity to the venue. I think it was one half. And everyone in the audience wore a mask. We practiced social distancing. The performers all wore a mask, except for the moments that we spent performing on stage. Kayla Maciejewski, who's been dancing with Joby for over 15 years, felt excited to be back on stage once again. In the hour and a half where you have a sense of hope, a sense of togetherness, a sense of feeling love, is incredible to be a part of and to make that happen for everybody who came to see us tonight. Despite the limited attendance of the venue, Maciejewski loved the turnout. I think the show went great. I was really surprised with how many people came out, but it's great to see that people felt comfortable enough to come see us. I felt like the venue did a great job at keeping everybody safe. With this only being his second show with UMX, Tyquan Anderson made sure to prepare. And even like going to the rehearsals, it was kind of like, you know, as dancers, we would just remember the dances, but like there was like a lot of mistakes, a lot more than usual. So like it took some work to get back to. But like, it was weird because like, once you're back on stage, like, it all kind of like, came back. Although it was only one show, the experience left the dancers and the audience hopeful for things to come. In New Britain, this is Jaden Rogers for Middlesex News. Shamone! Thank you, Jaden. 
You can find out more about the ultimate Michael Jackson experience at JoeBeasMichael.com. The pandemic is taking a toll on performing arts. It's happening at the professional level and at local schools. MXCC News reporter Connor Smith shows us how the situation is affecting a musical production at a high school in Deep River. So back in March before the shutdown, a large group of kids in Valley Regional High School were getting ready for one of the biggest weekends in their entire high school career. Valley Regional Musical Productions, or simply VRMP, is Valley Regional's musical program. They put on a show every year with many of these shows often end up being nominated and winning awards. However, a few days before opening night of their performance, Matilda, director Ingrid Walsh received an email. And, and I watched them and I just, I started crying and then they, you know, looked up and I said, you might as well stop. Their show was unfortunately canceled due to COVID-19 and they couldn't perform any of the four performances lined up. I think I've, I don't think that I've ever been uh, more uh, heartbroken broken for for all of the kids, um, especially the seniors, um, but not even just the seniors, but everybody that works so hard. Despite the show's cancellation, Ingrid decided to make the Thursday of that week their opening and closing night, with a filming crew recording their dress rehearsal to watch later. But with COVID still a big issue, chances for a show this year are slim, but could be possible. So now I have to come up with um, a plan, but it has to be 100% virtual. You know, I, I just have to figure out how and what um, I can do. And, you know, our kids going to be interested. Ingrid says she's still brainstorming, but she remains hopeful. I think that we need to remember as artists um, that that we're, we're, we're more capable than anybody to think outside of the box. And, and here we just need to move past this obstacle and find ways to continue to do what we do. This is Ben Connor Smith of MXCC News. Back to you. Good luck, Ingrid, and the rest of the crew working hard to make this musical happen. That's all the time we have tonight. We'll see you back here in two weeks with another edition of MXCC News.